in the lower left position, we do have the blue Terran player. It is Poyo. And his opponent up in the top right, we do have the red Protoss. It is Druid to Warner. So, uh, what have we seen out of Wana so far? We have seen uh, a lot of Blink Stalkers in game one, which he nearly won, actually. So, uh, just a little tiny bit of overextending himself there, and uh, that's all it took for him to lose the game. Then in game number two, uh, we saw a proxy Immortals or proxy robo with immortals and he actually managed despite his forces uh, being a split up to uh, successfully defend at two racks and then press on to take the game and demolishing uh, his opponent in his own uh, main base what do you think this guy has up his sleeve i mean he's got to have something stored up well he's shown that he can do lots he shows that he really likes bling stalkers but I'm just thinking that actually Wanna may go for something a bit more l legitimate in this game and just, I, I mean that in the sense of a bit more like straight up a longer game because to be honest, you don't want to take too many risks when your tournament career hangs in the balance and if Wanna was to win this series against Poyo, that's a big win for him. Poyo is quite a well-known player, he does pretty solid and as such, that'll be really good but a nice little supply depot wall off there, just dropping it down on its way out to deny the scout, therefore Wanna doesn't know whether it's going to be a command center first or if it's going to be Hmm you're thinking. I can hear your thinking thoughts. I'm just a little bit surprised because we see a Nexus first. That's one thing I'm uh, I'm thinking about right now. And the second thing I'm thinking about is uh, that your Skype is kind of uh, glitching a little bit, as if it does not have enough upload. I will switch. I will switch my camera off while we're in game. That oh, might okay. help it. Okay. So it should all clear up now. But yeah, we yep. have got, of course, that Nexus down. We've got the Command Center coming out now. So it's going to be a one racks Command Center up against a Nexus first build out of Warner. So this is going to be a macro game. We should be seeing the mid and late game very shortly indeed. And therefore, we should get a lot of action. It could come down to Viking and Ghost positioning for Poyo. It could. Um, Viking positioning on this map is... Uh you know, you position the Vikings similar to how you would position the Broodlords, but uh, the problem is that uh, the Vikings need to stay with your ground army as well. So pretty much uh, you only want to be fighting near ledges, dead airspace and such. You don't want to be fighting uh, above open ground near the watchtowers, unless it's your watchtower and you have a planter fortress to fall back on. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that... Uh, Poyo did not try to do something like a um, uh, bunker contain or bunker rush towards this Nexus first build. Uh, definitely a viable option, but uh, I guess he just kind of uh, said to himself, okay, you go for a Nexus first, I'm taking the hit, I'm taking the hit and I will play your game. So uh, now the Protoss has a slight economical advantage over the Terran, which is always what you want to have in this matchup as a Protoss player. Yeah, I think it's all just very solid play, to be honest. it's As a Protoss in this situation, you want to have a good ec a good economy. You want to be able to have the option of going into your mid-game tech, be that a robotics facility into Quick Colossi, be it a Twilight Council for Blink into, obviously, High Templar, or whether you're just going to be going for flat out a, a very early third base. All are viable options on this map, but what you've got to be careful of is... Just the timing pushes the Terran can throw at you because there are so many and they are so strong it can be exceptionally hard to hold them off if you don't scout them appropriately. Speaking of timing pushes, look at this. A third gateway coming up just about lined up with uh, the finishing of the warp gate technology if uh, wanna chrono boost uh, his warp gate a little bit more. Uh, Poyo holding the center of the map. These two stalkers are trying to do some magic, but they are getting caught off, caught between these two marines, and at least one of them will go down. There we go. Nice job there by Poyo, and uh, Wanna just took a risk that just did not pay off, and he did not even confirm that the natural is still there. Yeah, that is very unfortunate for him. We do see the marines trying to just are trying to see if the stalker was being a bit silly and was going to go and try and go the quick way back. But no, luckily, Wana did go the long way through, avoiding the rest of the marines. 
We have the tech lab, we have the engineering bay, we have Stim half done, and now the starport starting for Poyo. So he's going to be going for that nicely upgraded Stim Marine Marauder Medivac army that is so potent at around the sort of 10 to 12 minute mark. For Wanna though, he's not really revealing much of his cards quite yet. He's getting up just a fourth gateway. And it's getting out a nice gateway force. Nothing too scary. Maybe worried about some kind of pushing coming. Mm, maybe he is. He did see quite a lot of marines. He did not confirm the natural. Uh, but I really think that this was his plan all along. To go for a gateway push very quickly off of that uh, Nexus first. But that being said, the time for a gateway push has long passed. I mean, he will not be able to do very much right now. No, he's not going to be able to do much with those gateway units alone, and I'm glad to see the robotics facility is coming down as well as the forge, but really, they're both... Poyo will have the upgraded advantage for a moment, and that plus one push can be oh so devastating. It's something that many Protoss players have fallen to. But Wanna now just taking out that Marine, making sure that he's got a secure position to take a third should he want to. But meanwhile, we've just got one Stalker getting sniped out behind the natural, and to be honest... I, both these players have been really quite passive this game so far. They have. Uh, Poyo just making sure that he has the control over his side of the map, and uh, Wana making sure he has control over his side of the map. Now, regarding this uh, uh, this forge and this robotic facility, it really c the, both of them actually came down a little bit too late. So I really think that uh, Wana wanted to pressure his opponent at first, and then. Uh, did not know if he actually can do so safely, so he backed away and, uh, you know, uh, continued on with plan B. The thing is, when this push with the medevac comes, there is not going to be nearly enough units to defend successfully. No Colossi will be out. Uh, just two Immortals. Now, Immortals are good if you have good force fields and you know where your opponent army is. Which yeah. Wanna does not know. That's the problem for Wana. He he doesn't know which way it's coming in, as you quite rightly said. The force load's going down as he spots things. A great scan from Poyo, though. He's just getting a nice look at, actually, what has my opponent got? Can I push on up into this? And with the plus one, with the doom drop coming... Oh, my goodness! Wana, he's not going to see this coming in. He moves the wrong way with his army, and now those medevacs are going to get up into the main place. And Wana could be in serious problems now. He still doesn't know it's there. Does just spot it with the edge of the map. But, of course, here comes the stalk as the stim goes down. There are three medevacs there, and attack up a ramp into this is going to be oh so difficult yeah but there are buildings in the way of that infantry those buildings actually are saving Wana right now because otherwise that infantry would have circled around the nexus sniped a lot more pros but thanks to the fact that they have been blocked by these two gates and a pylon allowed Wana to successfully defend and he did not lose all that much in the defense I have to say no, he didn't lose too much at all. And, wow, Wana, he's just playing really solidly yet again. He's getting his Twilight Council behind this. But as we're seeing on the screen now, Poyo just secured his third base. And that is a bit of a problem because that means that Poyo, he's a base up. He's got an extra mule. And that is worrying times for any Protoss player. It is. Um, now, the thing that Poyo has to kind of find out is... Uh, he needs to know precisely what his opponent is going for. Now, judging that he has seen the forge and he has seen uh, the robo facility and no robo bay, uh, he has to know that this is going to be gateway focused. Yet, we do not see any ghost academies going down, which ordinarily we do see out of Terran's building right about this time. So he's going to be a little weak versus that gateway army. The upgrades are 1-1 one, one for the Terran and uh, 1 armor for the gateway units with plus 1 attack coming up. And a second forge should be trying to go up relatively soon-ish. Uh, we also do have charge and it uh, seems like Wana really favors going Storm and Archons over Colossi. Which I can sort of see. The, you get preference between the two players, but Poyo, he doesn't have his Ghost Academy down yet, so he's not going to be able to respond to that instantly. Mm -hmm. And really, I don't think he did enough damage with that triple drop. He d that's going to be playing on his mind, that he wanted to do more there, but he is still ahead by a good eight workers. And when you take mules into account as well, that actually means that Poyo has about 500 to 700 more minerals coming in 
per minute. His gas income is also a third higher than that of his opponent. And as such, he's just going to want to be very, very happy. Yep, uh, all the Terran is looking right now. Poyo just wants to make sure that his opponent does not get an economic leg up over him. So he'll be just looking and there nice goes cancel. the cancel. Nice one, immediately cancelling that. But that being said, you know, if he manages to do this one more time, one more time forcing a cancel or even killing the third base, it can be a game-ending game maneuver uh, considering he has enough forces to defend back home. Uh, because the Protoss, if he wants to be going, even now if we look at the bank, so many minerals, not enough gas, and Protoss, if he's going gateway armies, he needs a lot of that gas to replenish those HTs because they're so vulnerable, die so quickly, and cost so much. Oh, here we go. It looks like an engage warning to go down some force to trap a couple of units, but not enough. One are going to be forced back at the moment. But, of course, revealing the High Templar means the Poyo has had the opportunity to get up his own ghosts. And that is something that... One up really doesn't want because a couple of EMPs on the High Templar and that reduces the splash damage that one is able to do to a grand total of zero. Yeah, and uh, we do have a lot of High Templars out on the field. Uh, eight High Templars. So, for one, Poyo really needs those ghosts. For two, he really needs to bait out some storms like he did a couple of seconds ago. A nice storm landed, but completely missing the majority of the army and only damaging some units, not killing a single one. This is what Poyo needs to do before he actually gets enough ghosts with his army. And this is the dance I've been talking about uh, before in PvT. This is the micro dance and the positional dance, the awareness dance, the reflex challenge that you that you do with your opponent and whoa. Wanna you stalker a... That stalker had obviously been very naughty, but we've got zealots running in, but only two of them. The other two in the stalker did not get the memo that they should go and attack instead just standing there. Meanwhile, in the center of the map, we do see that one are trying to get a good engagement angle, but Payo, he's going to start, start a step micro all the way back home, and indeed, he's going to try and do some more damage as best he can, but this third base is finally going to get cleaned up, and if all of those units had engaged at once, it may have gone a little differently. Mm. I think those two other zealots were just uh, there to... You know, they were just fanboys encouraging their buddies. Yeah, heave at like, him, you can kill that like, On the count of three, we'll run in and attack. Okay, guys, one, two. Yeah, you go for it. <laughs> you got this. And that's <laughs> exactly that was their plan. Uh, now, uh, one goes going forward. Nice snipe there from Wana. Immediately reacting to that. I mean, he only saw a small glimpse of that ghost, and immediately he blanked those stalkers in there and snipe the ghost and right now Poyo is pretty much contained despite being on 200 200 he can't really afford to move out because he will get stormed to death yeah but Poyo can wait he's got his third base up still but we've got some more zealots moving in towards that third base now as well as some high templar oh the storms the storms are going to be so big are you ready there we go the mineral line has it's been destroyed Oh my god, almost all of the SCVs went down. How will Poyo react to that? Even some storms landing on the pursuing army. Is he going? And he even morphs the HTs into the Archons while still maintaining this nice contain on Poyo's natural. And he's just going to be warping in more units. Each unit he loses, he will just send to that natural base. And uh, even he's pushing up here, up the giant fat ramp, but the ghosts are coming in. Will they be killed or will they get EMPs? No EMPs got off so far. Well, no decent one, the ones at least. Now here Ooh. comes the mass ghost. There was a good EMP. There's another good EMP getting so many of those shields down. And well, the ghosts unfortunately are being destroyed as quickly as they were EMPing. But this means the Payo is able to start pushing forward. The supplies bang on equal at the moment. Payo just coming out on top, in my opinion, as we're looking at it. And well, we see that the attack of the third base with some zealots is able to do some nice damage with the medevacs healing up as quickly as they can. This is exceptionally close yet again. But I think Payo just has the advantage. Well, uh, his third base is pretty much in operational compared to his opponent, and uh, even though it's true that Wana just lost all of his High Templars, it's also true that Poyo lost all of his Ghosts. Nice storm going down, even stimming the already damaged units to get that one High Templar that he does not manage to do, and right now all Wana has to do is defend his third base and not incur any losses on probe side. 
Now that High Templar, who I've now named Harry, has managed to escape out the back. But meanwhile, we've got the Zealots pushing forward. We've got some Storms missing their targets. But Payo, he's just started stepping all the way he can. And that is just allowing him to be so cost effective currently. These two actually only 200 resources lost difference between them. So this game is very, very close. Very close indeed, and I think this Terran army might very well be pushed back. I would, r I really would like Wana to be a little bit more patient with his storm. He's wasting a lot of energy needlessly without killing any units, but uh, he did a good job of slowing Poyo down, really. I mean, 36 SCV skilled, and he still is on the move, and he's looking to secure a fourth base right now. Upgrade Upgrades are... Uh, two armor, one attack for the Protoss, and three, three for the Terran. Now, in a direct engagement, storms are going to be the only thing, pretty much, that will keep Wana in the engagement. He's he's been really lacking the second forge uh, all game long, and that's why he needs to drag this game out even longer and try to get some damage done to Poyo even more and more frequently. Uh, he did a good job a couple of minutes back, but he needs to continue that. And oh my god, look at the number of medevacs for Poyo. That is a grand total of 16 medevacs. That is a lot. That is going to be an awfully large amount of healing. And Wana, if the storms are good, he should be okay. A lot of those medevacs are very high on energy, but is Poyo going to go for it? No. No, he isn't. He needs to be very careful. I mean, the position that Wana was in before... Um, Poyo just sacrificed all of his ghosts. He was trying to get at all of those HTs, and he has to go through the gateway army. Uh, right now, look at this little force of uh, five Archons and two Zolts up uh, at the north side. It's big enough uh, so that Poyo moved his entire army away from the center, giving up the center position. Beautiful maneuver here by Wana, actually, baiting the army away and retaking center position and command of the map. And once again, Poyo is back on the ropes and pushed back into his own area and that this allows Wana to take a fourth base with impunity while slowing Poyo down even more. This is exactly what he wants and he even is using war prisms uh, to hide some high samplers and protect them from EMPs. Here we go, here comes Poyo! But he's not going to be able to go through. Meanwhile, where is that war prison? It's just still sitting up there. Is he going to go in behind? It's going to go try and behind to try and get some more stims. But there we see the stim forward. And we get a good amount of EMPs going off. Another storm hitting. Unfortunately, not quickly enough. Damage going down everywhere. Poyo does seem to be keeping his supplies slightly higher with no more storms. These medevacs just able to heal up nearly all of that infantry all at once and it looks like Wana is gonna lose this game now unfortunately he's down to just half the supply of that of his opponent and Poyo is now just looking to be in such a strong spot it was a very nice idea for Wana trying to go uh, with the Warpism from the back and storming all the army but unfortunately he only got one storm off and then immediately all the three High Templars including Warpisms died instantly and I was keeping tabs on the health of uh, this turn army of, uh, of Poyo the health wasn't even dropping almost in that engagement. Like, seriously, the health was not even dropping. This is one way you can go about it. You can uh, make a lot of medevacs to counteract the effect of storms. And uh, the only chance the Protoss player has at that moment is storm and immediately finish off the entirety of the army. Because otherwise you'll just heal up the damage and you'll be back and he's just going to keep on losing stuff. Yep, this fourth base is gonna go down. And no cancel either. Warner really couldn't afford that. He's completely broke behind this, unfortunately, after the resupply. But Payo, he is just still pushing forward. He's taking another command, two command centers simultaneously now. And that just means that with that scan, he's saying, can I take my opponent head on? And I think the answer is gonna be yes. And still not using any cloak, despite uh, no observer being with this army. That's uh, really interesting to me. But nice EMPs actually damaging a lot of those zealots and getting all the high templars. No storms available. And this is games uh, game, ladies and gentlemen. Poyo is going to take it right here, right now. There is no way for Wana, even remotely, to get back into this game now. Yep, this is going to be very very easy now for Poyo. Wana, he's going to put up his last stand, but there's the GG. Well played. And can I just say, congrats to Wana. He put up an amazing set of games. Actually, both of them, both Poyo and Wana, were deserving potential winners there. And I've got to remember to turn my video back on. But both of those were very, 
very deserving 